All right, we're going to start with our disassembly, our GCB uh, 160 engine here. We've taken a couple fasteners out so far, just a couple of the Phillips uh, screws for the uh, fan, sh or excuse me, the recoil shroud here. So with this out of the way, one thing we did make a recommendation, we're not too concerned about it at the college here, but if this were a customer unit, what would we want to do to this cover? Let it so. Yeah, we'd want to be careful with it. We'd put it on rags or something. Right now, we're going to take advantage of using it as a little storage tray to hold some stuff. So keep in mind that if this were chrome or anything else, we'd want to have some real concern about that. Okay. Our recoil here, like I said, I've already got these fasteners loose. You guys at home are going to fight that a little bit more to get apart. The inside, these are all similar fasteners for me, that they're all in the same area. I don't have a problem of mixing them up. So I will keep all of the similar fasteners together on that. Take this, get it out of our way. On the fuel tank itself, if you guys remember that, and you guys are gonna see this on the Honda training module that they talk about the hose clamp to pull this off. This is plastic. If we just go yanking on this, actually in the video, you can actually see how much that's bending. We wanna use some real caution on that. It's a one-time use uh, clamp, if you will. I saw Honda's newest version is they don't use the thin wire clamp they go to a wide band style and you'll see those a lot on your motorcycles so um, just replace them why would we not want to take a chance on a fuel or oil line right exactly so I just take my two picks here and I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and try to spread these apart and then uh, I'm gonna make it so large it's gonna ruin it and then we also said one of the things we could do is take this and uh, get behind here. We want it to be free. Get behind here and basically walk it off. So what I'm doing is supporting the fuel valve so that I don't break it. If I just pull it this direction, don't support it here, I am going to break it. So if you had fuel fuel in here, you would have to pinch this off the pair of vice grips or something or somehow suck the fuel out um, to get it out of the way. Be careful when you're taking covers off for these guys. What do we call these? Dowel pins. Dowel pins, if they can fall out, they're gonna be a problem. Have that out of the way here. Uh, what I'm gonna do here is on your lab sheet, I want you to see here as we follow along here, you're gonna put your engine number, your serial number, uh, it says, what is the model for the industrial version of this? Does anybody remember that? We have a GCV. Does anybody remember what the industrial was? The GX. GX. So the GX would have the roller bearing and some other, other parts on there. So um, one of the things here, what must be done before disassembling this engine? What kind of things do you think we'd need to do? So we would think about whether we need to drain the oil. If it's on a power washer or mower deck, uh, sometimes it is easier to drain the oil with it off, and sometimes it's easier to take advantage of using the whole um, chassis, if you will, to dump the oil. Typically for us, we drain fluids and then pull motors when we think about motorcycles or power sports. Um, we take another step in here. Before we disassemble, what were the two tests that we did to the engine to test its integrity? Compression, compression leak, leak down. down. A compression leak down. So that's something I highly recommend on there, okay? 